Welcome. This is your official welcome to the August 2024 Pyra member orientation. So glad that you're all here. Uh, my name is Lily Anna Arguello. I'm the director of membership. Everyone calls me Lily, so feel free to call me Lily at any time. Um, before I get started with the agenda, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping. As you see, we are recording this. We have previous member orientations uh, recorded up on the Pyra YouTube channel. So uh, we'll be sure to send you that link post orientation uh, to our YouTube channel to this. It'll include this recording and it include previous recordings. Uh, the slides that I'm going to be going through, I will also send in a, a follow up email. Uh, so the, that follow-up email will include these slides and will include any URLs or additional information that we discussed and that you communicated to me today that you would find helpful. Um, please interact. We're going to use the chat. Um, oh, hi, Michael. Thank you. Michael's a new, uh, I, I noticed you're a new uh, member, so thank you for joining. Uh, but let's interact in the chat. I have a lot to cover. We're going to be together for 60 minutes, and I tend to overemphasize things and, uh, however, really trying to focus on the things that you, the attendees of this month's uh, uh, orientation, want to focus on. But we will likely have time, uh, a little bit at least, for one or two of you to unmute and share a question on live. Uh, um, live. Uh, so if that comes up, uh, first, you know, interact in the chat as we go forward. And there's a question that maybe hasn't been answered for you. Just uh, raise your hand or let me know that you'd like to unmute, and we'll have you ask live. Um, so that'll be good. Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. I think that's it. Uh, thank you so much. I see that people are coming from, we have a couple in Orange County. South, welcome, Chelsea. You're in South Pass. I, I do remember emailing you. Noam, welcome. You're in the uh, San Fernando Valley. Um, wonderful, wonderful. So let's get going and talk about what's on the agenda today. I am in the welcome portion, <laughs> um, and I'm going to provide you a general update on what's going on today with uh, with Pyra and our chapters. Uh, I, as I mentioned briefly, I really want to focus on what do you need to get out of this webinar so that you can walk away um, feeling like you have the information you need to make a decision on becoming a member, renewing your membership, um, making the most out of this membership if you have a membership. So uh, we, we're going to do a poll. You're going to let me know what's that number one thing that you want to walk away from this webinar from. You might have more than one thing that you want to walk away from, from this webinar with. Just put it in the chat. Um, also, if it is a topic that is really specific to you, sometimes people want to talk about HR certification in detail, for example, or volunteerism in detail, for example. I may ask that we set up a time separately so that we could talk about that because um, those things are pretty unique to the individual. So um, that's also an opportunity for us uh, to have ongoing conversations. I'm going to introduce myself a little bit more and I'm going to introduce my team and also our special guest, which I'm really excited to have, Ivan Vasquez, who is the chair of the Pirate Antelope Valley uh, uh, chapter that we have. Um, we have someone in Chicago. Thank you for joining, Valerie. I uh, love that you're moving out to LA. Um, then we're going to go through so, an overview of Pyra as an association and our chapters. I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the Pyra member benefits and those top three or to five that I think you really want to know about. Again, I'll answer any other questions that you have as we go through. We'll talk about learning and networking at Pyra and some seminars that are coming up in the next uh, six to 12 months. And then we'll just wrap it up. Uh, so that's what we're doing. I will spend the, the the 60 minutes with you. So really appreciate you spending your lunch time with me today. Uh, all right, what's a general update? Uh, well, 
uh, we've been post pandemic for a couple of years, thank God. And um, the exciting part of that is that we really doubled up on our virtual uh, professional development. Uh, benefits to our members. So we're excited to offer up to three webinars per month free for members. I have a list at the end of the presentation of all the things that are coming up that are virtual and, and in person. Uh, but please start taking advantage of those virtual webinars. There's a lot of lunch and learns or they happen really early and you get recertification credit for them. So it's a great easy way to keep up on your professional development. And we cover a lot of different topics. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. Our chapters are meeting in person. Uh, a lot of them have changed up the way they meet. Um, some are still kind of, you know, getting back to the flow uh, where they were pre-pandemic. But what has changed, for instance, is that in the past, our chapters, uh, we have 18 of them, they would meet in a very traditional manner. So the same time every month, same day of the week of the month. They'd have either a breakfast meeting or a lunch meeting. And so what the pandemic taught us at least is that we want to meet people where they are. So some of our chapters have changed things up. A great example is Pyra North Orange County. I always bring them up as a great example. Um, they, I'm just looking at the chat. I will be pausing from time to time to take notes or to look at the chat. Um, they decided, okay, let's do our traditional morning meeting. So they'll do that one month. And then the next month, they'll do a lunchtime meeting, which would be workshop style, idea lab style, and it'll be during lunch, over lunch. And uh, the third month, they will do a, a, a networking event in the evening. So a social, sometimes it's purely social. Uh, other times there's a program programmatic component. So kind of anybody can participate. So I'm really excited about that. Other chapters are doing something similar, but they'll rotate in a webinar instead of a lunchtime meeting or something like that. So really excited about how that's going. Um, please check the Pyra calendar often. We're always adding things to the calendar. That's where you're going to, that's a official place to go look for the meeting times, the locations, and things like that. And um, honestly, one of the things that I think sets us apart uh, is that we provide professional development that's affordable, accessible, and actionable, uh, whether it's in your neighborhood at an in-person meeting near your work or your home, or it's at um it's a virtual modality. So uh, really excited about all that we have to offer right now. All right, so it's time for the poll. Um, wanderful. Uh, do you want to launch that for me, Elisa? So like I said, what is that one piece of information that you're interested in receiving during this webinar? I want to make sure that you walk away from this chat from this uh, opportunity with those questions answered, or at least that I set up some time or I um, investigate it and follow up with you later. So we have 14 people and we have five, six, all right, we're getting some engagement. Monthly meetings, more people wanna find out about monthly meetings, HR certification, volunteering. The Pyra Shroom Connection. Okay. All right. You can share the results, Elisette. And there was an other in there. So if you said other, let me know uh, what that other piece is and um, we'll go for it. So it looks like priority number one is the Pyra monthly meetings. So if there's something specific you want to know about the Pyra monthly meetings, definitely put it in the chat. I'm going to be talking about that. So I'll speed through a lot of the things until we get to the slide that shows a map of all of our chapters. And then we can talk a little bit more about the chapter meetings. So oh, welcome from San Dimas. All right, well, let's get going. And uh, 
I'm going to br be really brief about me. So I'm there in the middle. Uh, that's a couple years ago now. <laughs> um, my name is Liliana Arguello. I did get HR certified uh, in 2021. I passed the SHRM SCP exam. Yay, yay, yay. So I'd be happy to share my experience with that. Um, I, uh, my I started my career in uh, organizational development. Actually, I worked for a boutique consulting firm in Westwood, and the founder was a professor out of the graduate, um, the Anderson Graduate School of Management. It wasn't grad, the Anderson back then. That's that's kind of dating me um, out of UCLA, but um, I kind of grew up in organizational development. I ended up. Um, wanting to go internal and decided to use my planning skills. So a lot of what I did was strategic planning, environmental assessments. Um, we did corporate culture audits, structure audits, uh, but a lot on the assessment side and planning side. So I wanted to go internal. Uh, it ended up that it was right during the great recession that that was going on for me. And I ended up in the nonprofit world. Uh, to make a long story short, I got recruited into Pyra. I was a Pyra member. Uh, that's a great thing for me to mention, by the way. I was a Pyra member before I ever dreamed of coming on staff. But I was recruited to Pyra from a, a position I was holding at the Girl Scouts of Greater Los Angeles. I was expanding that. It's one of the largest uh, leadership development programs for young women and women out there. And uh, I was focused on expanding that work in the lower income quartiles and Spanish speaking quartiles of Los Angeles. And I had been doing some volunteer leadership work on the side as well through my um, graduate school and, and things like that. And so the CEO of Pyra, Rafael Rivera, knew someone I knew, saw me on LinkedIn, and that's how I got recruited over to Pyra. So I like to say that because that is a great plug for LinkedIn. Make sure that you have a really solid LinkedIn profile that lists not just your work experience and your education, but also your volunteer experience and make sure those are things are connected. Um, and I love my job. Uh, the best way to get a hold of me is email. And but this is my emails here, my phone numbers here, and I am going to now pause and invite Elisa to introduce herself. She's my right hand here on the member services team. So Elisa, give give you some floor time. <laughs> Thank you, Lily, and welcome everyone. I wanted to personally welcome you. Um, thanks for joining. I know. Um, that um, you probably see me active on the chat and that's what I'm doing throughout the webinar. I'll be monitoring the chat box and um, pausing Lily so that she can answer some questions and, and engage with you all. So feel free to share your LinkedIn profiles. I know some of you are already connecting via email, which is great. So I encourage you to connect and uh, share your LinkedIn profiles. Uh, but yes, a little bit about me. I am the membership coordinator here at Pyra and I have a background in public relations and communications and I've also been here for um, I think I'm going on seven or eight years I always get those two numbers confused since I've been out <laughs> um, early this year due to my um, my maternity leave so I've lost track of time but um, like Lily mentioned we we love what we do and we're committed to serving you and helping you get the most out of your membership so always feel free to connect with us. We're very accessible. And um, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, like I mentioned, I'll be monitoring the chat box and we'll be engaging with you to make sure that you get the most out of this time. So I'll hand it back to you, Lily. Thanks so much. Thank you. At least that's my right hand. We work, uh, um, I think some, some people on the team think we're odd. We copy each other on everything. I like to know what's going on. I don't really, you know, I just had to read things, skim it, but she knows what I got going on as well. So if if we, we just back each other up, she's probably going to be the first person you talk to. She knows exactly how to help people. So, uh, and we're here. We are pretty dedicated. I am, I'm very, um, 
proud of the membership team here. Our commitment is to get back to members within 24 hours, uh, whether you call us or email us. If, if we haven't gotten back to you within 36 to 48 hours, something happened. So email us again, uh, but we're here and, and, and want to make sure you get what you need from the Pyra membership, um, uh, you know, as, at a, as, you know, as much as we can. Uh, also on this slide is Matthew Pallet. Someone here asked about volunteers. So we have volunteer opportunities and our election process is actually coming up soon. Um, uh, we have volunteer opportunities at the association wide level and at the chapter level, and we have 18 chapters. So there's a lot of opportunities to volunteer. If you're interested, shoot me an email and, um, we could talk a little bit about uh, uh, the various volunteer opportunities. Uh, our 18 chapters work quite autonomously. So I'm not always, I don't really know sometimes what volunteer opportunities they have. So I would need to connect you with them. Um, and that's a great first place to start. And we'll talk a little bit more about volunteering, but Matthew Pallet is my liaison with the association board. He is a member advocate. He wants to make sure that we continue uh, uh, providing you with first class professional development in HR, the connections and uh, community that you need in HR to make you successful. So um, I love working with him and he's a great guy. You'll see him at a lot of our seminars and conferences. So now I'm going to invite Ivan. Ivan, if you want to come on audio and video and um, this is our special guest, Ivan Vasquez. He's the chair of one of our chapters. And go, go ahead and introduce yourself, Ivan. All right, great. Thank you so much, Lily. Hi, everybody. Glad to have you here. Um, this is very exciting, new members. You know, this is awesome. Um, I just got to go ahead and talk a little bit about me and, you know, what my journey has been. Um, I started uh, my first position in HR back in 2015, so almost 10 years, um, and I started with onboarding um, at a company um, in Lancaster, California, as a, um, I I'm sorry, I, I started um, with that company, and it's an education-based company, it's called Lifelong Learning. Administration Corporation or LLAC for short. Um, we service the Learn for Life schools um, that are throughout the state and um, we've been expanding out. So a lot of my HR background is in the education field and I've learned so much. And I've, I also transitioned from onboarding to recruiting, which is really where my specialty um, was for quite a few years before going back to our core HR um, function. So now I'm doing um, verifications of employment, um, employee records, um, I-9 verifications, um, and special programs with, with within the department. So I've been learning so much in this past, you know, in these past nine years. And I haven't moved away from that company because I just love the work that we do and i love hr as a whole um before that um i was in rotc the reserve officer training corps for the air force um and one of my main functions there was um personnel so that's kind of where that sparked that interest of working with people and um and this type of line of work so um just a little bit of background on that um I started making connections with the other um, HR professionals in the HR department, kind of getting to know a little bit about their background, how they came into um, being um, in their positions. I was very curious, you know, to see where this career will take me. So just starting those initial conversations within the organization that I was in, that, that I'm in, um, really helped me expand um, and, and learn so much. Um, we we have several people that are part of the um of, of the of Pyra as members and the company was paying for us to attend speaker events to encourage us to 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 go and engage and learn and and part of our professional development so that was really nice um for for them to to provide that opportunity um I do have a degree in human resource management so I got serious about that um and through attending events at Pyra, I became more aware of, you know, my professional goals. And I started learning more about industry certifications, such as SHARAM and PHR and 
micro credentials and such. So I went ahead and, you know, and started doing that. Um, I currently hold several micro credentials through HRCP um, and I do have an HR general certificate, but my next, my next step is um, to become um, PHR certified. Um, so that's what, what I'm currently doing. And I wouldn't have known about this if it wasn't from attending Pyra and learning, you know, hearing from other people. Um, so networking is going to be a big thing um to to keep in mind when attending events i highly encourage people to talk to each other when we have um in person events and and just um getting to know each other in that sense uh after attending you know several events throughout my you know the beginning years uh i became um an official member of pyra in 2020 so i've been you know a, a member for 4 years and my boss at the time was actually the chair for the Antelope Valley chapter, and she invited me um, to join um, the, you know, the the board as the social media chair. Um, with my background in social media, um, I, I went ahead and, and took that took that on, and I had a lot of fun getting to know um, the back end kind of um, structure of how things work, and you know I had a lot of fun doing that. We had several speakers come to our home office, um, which is in Lancaster. Um, we do have, um, as Lily mentioned, um, our meetings um, in the morning. Um, we, we like doing the mornings before people um, have to go to their um, to their jobs or kind of work work in a, in in a, in a way where we we can ensure that people will come out. Um, we in our area we found it hard for people to come during their lunch hour. Um, or even after work. So, so we came with a breakfast um, included in, in our packages for, for speakers and that helped a lot. So um, we, we, we've we grown our membership in the area and um, we've had several events be besides just speakers coming up. We've had a um, paint night. Uh, I remember we, we, um, we brought out a professional painter to come out and meet with our members and, and have us, um, step by step let us know you know show us how, how to do um a painting for i think it was christmas time and i'm not a painter whatsoever and i was surprised at how my painting came out just by that guidance so that sparked something in me i was like maybe i do have a creative side and i didn't even know um so that so those kind of things sometimes come at you when you least expect it so i do encourage you to to attend some of the events that that chapters put out um as chair, I am trying to to think of more um more things that we could do in the area. Um, we are a desert town, so um there are some some um opportunities out there for hiking and such. So we're 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 taking a look into that. So more to come. And um this year I it's when I transitioned to to chapter chair. So I am very new in the role, um, but I'm not new with Pyra. <laughs> so um this is a very exciting opportunity for me to also develop uh, my leadership skills um, in, in this capacity. So it, it's it's pretty neat. And I know that I have the support from the home office. Um, I've actually met Lily in person several times, but we had the um, the opportunity to, to work together um, at the California HR conference this year as I was a volunteer. Um, manning the, the registration desk and also assisting elsewhere, um, being an usher, et cetera. So that was really fun. Um, and so those opportunities that come to us, um, you know, are there. So those of you that, that are, that are looking for those opportunities that by our home office will definitely know that, uh, will definitely let you know that we need the assistance. So you could always just raise your hand and we'll be more than glad, um, to have that conversation with you. Um, I think that's great, Ivan. There's going to be more times for you to chime in, and I won't. I'll try not to put you on the spot. But um, when we talk about, for example, um, chapter events uh, and meetings, uh, we, maybe you could chime in a little bit more to to talk about what you got going on. Or I I know that um, Brianna grew up in Antelope Valley, so maybe she'll want to go hiking with you. 
in the yeah. area. So um, let's keep going. Uh, I want to get through some of the, the things that people wanted uh, to focus on today. So really briefly, this is our mission statement. I'm not going to read it to you, but basically we exist because of the California HR community. We want to provide services in, uh, for instance, providing innovative programming. So I think I have someone here on the line who may be a speaker. If you want to speak for Pyra, we, we can provide you information about that. I highly recommend that you also go, if you are a speaker and interested in speaking, I could introduce you to the chapter level board officers because they plan their own programs and they do a great job with that. So you want to get to know them, either attend those meetings to get to know them, or, or I'd be happy to do an electronic introduction for you. Um, we set ourselves apart uh, with our networking uh, opportunities. Um, we are the largest, one person asked about the Pyra Sherm connection. We are the largest Sherm affiliate in the United States. Uh, and um, I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, Sherm has, I think it's around over 500 affiliates in the United States. I think we're the largest in the world, but I just don't have the data on the SHRM affiliates in China or India. So um, there are a lot of SHRM at large members in Southern California, and I'm going to show you a map of our footprint so you get a sense of what we cover. Um, yes, Michael. Um, but the SHRM at large, they're at large. They're all, there's no kind of convening place for them. Well, Pyra is that place. And we have 18 chapters that convene. It's a very warm community. I've heard uh, uh, our members say, our longtime members say that they've met their best friends through Pyra. So as Ivan was talking about, they at LL uh, lifelong learning. I'm going to uh, mess up the acronym there, Ivan. Um, their community within their organization has has kind of expanded into Pyra and they've helped develop the community in Antelope Valley. Um, we have really strong, really strong community. So this is the place where you're going to meet people face to face and you, uh, you you're going to build what I like to call your HR board of advisors. One of our volunteers in the past called it their HR Fab Five. So stay connected. Don't um, make it a goal for yourself to stay connected within Pirate, particularly if you want to grow in HR and you want to gain visibility in the HR community. Um, yeah, so that's why we exist. That is the Sherm Pyra connection. And if you have any further questions about that connection, let me know. We are a separate entity. Although we're affiliated, we're a separate entity and we have a separate membership. I think the two memberships go really well together. Um, you know, I tend to come from a very frugal place, uh, but if you are a senior leader in HR, I highly suggest you get the SHRM membership and you get the Pyra membership because they go really well together. Um, okay, uh, just a little bit more background on some key players. Tara Fournier is the president of the Pyra board. So she is on the board. She is the ultimate position on the board. She has an extensive background in HR management and organizational development. And she's a founder of T4 HR a consulting firm. And she just became, I'm going to mess up the name. She just became the interim HR head of the new museum. I think it's called the Lucas Museum that's coming up near Exposition Park. I'm really excited for her, um, but it's an interim position. So she's doing all kinds of great things. She also worked for SHRM and is on the SHRM, uh, California SHRM. So California has a state council. She's also on the board of that. Very well connected. You'll see her at, Ethan, you'll probably see her speaking at some of our upcoming events and you'll see her walking around our conference as well, which I'll tell you a little bit more about. This is Rafael Rivera. I told you about him a little bit when I introduced myself. He recruited me over. He's our chief executive officer and I really um, uh I'm grateful for him because he did a lot of 
reformulating of the association back, I think before I began, I began in 2014, I think in 2013, he started the process of rebranding the PIRA annual conference to the California HR conference. So we do that now in May, I'll give you a save the date in a bit. And he really built a great team. He got us through the pandemic. Uh, we're, re we're on a regrowth path right now because we did get affected, you know, in-person meetings is kind of our thing. And the conference was the largest conference on the West Coast, that California HR conference, and it shrunk a little bit. So we're regrowing, but he really knows what he's doing with respect to association management and creating some top-notch conference programming and experiences. And so feel free to reach out to him. He's great on LinkedIn and you can let him know um, that you thought I was wonderful or not uh, with this orientation. So a uh, great person to know. Really quickly, here's some demographics about, uh, uh, oh, great, Valerie, I'm just reading your note. Wonderful, yeah. Um, so right now, we in 2019, before the pandemic, we hit 4,500 members. We've shrunk to right around 3,500 members now. They were representing, approximately 2,300 companies. Um, the top industries represented by our members are manufacturing, consulting, uh, nonprofit healthcare and education. Um, our kind of sweet spot in terms of level of HR is that HR business partner level, managers and generalists, uh, HR managers and, and HR generalists that uh, constitute 40% of our membership. Um, right around 28% of our members are HR directors and above. We have a significant amount of HR consultants. And so when I say HR consultants, those are folks who are the CEOs or founders of their own consulting firms. So a lot of them come here to keep up with their professional development and network. Um, and then uh, I'm not gonna read all of these, except for I do wanna highlight it at the top right, no, top left, 6% um, of our members are what I call service providers. They're those natural partners to HR. They can include your uh, uh, staffing firms, the insurance brokers, the um, leadership consulting firms, the um, 501, uh, no, not 501, 401k, 401k advisors and financial advisors. So uh, there's a lot of brokers, insurance brokers. Don't be freaked out with them. Um, the ones that have been with us for a long time, they come here to build relationships and they're fantastic connectors. They even, most, some of them also have HR certifications like the one Ivan was talking about because they wanna know what your pain points are. Uh, a lot of the times, uh, so, you should not be you should not feel sold to at the meetings the chapter meetings which we'll discuss in a bit sometimes they do sponsor them and they'll do like a five minute pitch but they're really there just to get to know people uh what i really like about the service providers is a one great example is i went to the pyra long beach lunch um, we have a chapter in long beach and one of the gentlemen who's a service provider with ima used to be bolton he said you know if anyone's interested in a senior hr director job i know of some open i know of an opening in downtown los angeles and he would be happy to make that connection so um, this is where you're going to meet those people that have those connections and um so yeah let me know if you have any questions on this. I'm going to keep going. Uh, we have, oops, I skipped. This is the slide I wanted to focus on here. Uh, many of you said, I want to know about the monthly meeting. So we have 18 chapters. I am working on getting this map updated. Um, our largest chapter, I know there's a couple people in Orange County on the line today, is uh, South Orange County. Right now they have, uh, at the highest point in 2019, they had over 700 members. Right now they have 435 members. They meet every month. I think they're having a social coming up in August. I think it's listed on this last slide I have. Um, that's our largest chapter. If you go to those meetings, you can expect to meet between 45, 
um, in a sm breakfast meeting to up to 60, 70. In the heyday, you would, could expect to meet 100 people or see 100 people at those events. Uh, it's a great group. They have their own uh, board. Our second largest chapter is Pyra Los Angeles in, in um, downtown LA. Uh, they meet, uh, I think, every other month. They have a uh, uh, co-branded event coming up on August 22nd at the San Antonio Winery. If anyone's going to be in downtown, it's going to be a wine tasting and a panel talking about PAGA updates. So if you're an employment law nerd, that might be a good place to be. Um, I see something in the chat, so I'm going to pause. Oh, thank you for adding the South OC meeting. Um, so uh, they the chapters meet at different times, they rotate their meetings. Uh, you know, like I had mentioned earlier, it could be a breakfast meeting, it could be a lunch meeting. Uh, Antelope Valley has breakfast meetings. As a Pyra member, you can go to any Pyra chapter meeting for the member price. You do not have to be a member to attend the chapter meetings, but you won't pay the member price. Um, so if you plan on attending at least three or four per year and going to webinars, the membership really makes sense. You'll save the money. Um, what is a So if you have a specific question about a monthly meeting, let me know. But this is what it usually looks like. Uh, morning meet. Uh, let's take the lunch meetings because I like lunch meetings. I'm not so much. Sorry, Ivan. I'm not a morning person. Can't get there that early. I have a teenager. I need to get to school. So the lunch meetings are best for me. Uh, it'll start with a registration time and some networking. There's always a meal component. So there is an additional cost to go to the monthly meetings. That ranges between uh, $35 to $40, $45 for members. And then it'll increase by $10 to $15 if you're a non-member. You'll get a better price if you register online in advance. And if, for example, you are a member of Pyra South OC, that's what you selected as your preferred chapter, but you wanted to attend a Pyra North Orange County meeting, not a problem. I just suggest that you register in advance online at the Pyra calendar, because if you, there's always an opportunity to register on site, but they may not have confirmation that you're a member. So you may get charged the non-member price. And I don't want you to get upset about that. By the way, I don't want you to get upset about anything. If something's bugging you, email me. I'll do the best I can to fix it within 24 hours. Or if I'm online, I, I'm pretty quick. Uh, so that's what the monthly meetings are like. Let's see if I have any specific questions. No specific, does anyone want to unmute and ask me a specific question about the monthly meetings? So I have one really quick. I was told by Edgar that on September 12th, there is a um, morning meeting, but when I go on the Pyra's website for events to sign up, it's not there. So I'm a little confused on where to find that. Edgar, can I, what? What chapter and or what's uh, his last South name? Bay. Okay, it's a save the date. I just see it right now on September 12th. And um, let's see if I have any details for that. So it is on the calendar. Uh, Elisa, do you see it? Yeah, I see it also. September yeah, it's 12th. a 7.30 a.m event mm -hmm. valerie i mm -hmm. think they're still confirming the speaker so okay because yeah. like when i signed up for this i wasn't able to find that one but it okay. might have just went up like i said earlier oops. oops i didn't want to do that um like i said earlier we're always adding to the calendar so and these are volunteers so you know they're doing the best they can they can they're not paid people so but they do no, a really absolutely. great job Awesome. Yeah, it's coming. It, it is definitely coming. I'm sorry, Elisa. I just added that uh, meeting to the chat, so you can find it there. Awesome. All right, I'm going to keep going, but if any other questions come up, let me know. So I mentioned we have 18 chapters. Uh, one of them is actually a community in North San Diego. Um, we are having... They, you know, some of our chapters are less active than others. So if you have a question about a certain chapter, let me know. Uh, North 
San Diego County is very close to Sherm San Diego. So there's coverage there. We also have uh, four specialty groups. Three are listed here. We have the Pyra Foundation, which is, uh, I'll to tell you about them in a moment. We also have the Pyra Government Advocacy Team. We have the College Relations Team and we have the um, Pyra Emerging Leaders. They also have their own, their committees and they have their own boards and are quite autonomous too. They get a, a little bit more support uh, when necessary from the staff, uh, but they do great work. One of the things I wanted to tell you about is the Pyra Foundation has a scholarship coming up. They exist to raise money um, to provide scholarships for people who are uh, getting their HR degree. There's also another scholarship for HR certification and they all kind of work a little uh, differently. But this one is one I, I just want you to save the date on. Uh, it's opening up on September 23rd and you can get a scholarship ranging from $500 to $3,000, depending on whether you're a full-time graduate student or uh, all the way down to a part-time undergraduate student. Uh, right now, the details are uh, pretty similar to last year, but the details for 2024 aren't up on the site yet. We're getting that up, but I did want you to know about this. And if you have someone at your organization who's getting their degree in HR and wants to apply, please apply because a lot of people don't apply for these things and it just kind of goes by the wayside. So check that out. And they always need support if you're interested in volunteering. Uh, this is a group that's close to my heart. I've known the chair of this group since I was a uh, 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 consultant back in my Westwood days. Um, so their mission is to provide clear, balanced guidance around the legislation that's coming up and also advocacy. So every year they go up to Sacramento and they they participate on the Hill Days. Um, and they have quarterly events uh, that they bring in uh, legislators from Southern California to talk on certain issues that may be important or legislation that's, that's coming up. A big one right now that is being reintroduced is the whole student loan uh, uh, payment uh, offering through employers. Um, and there's a couple other ones. I don't know them all, but uh, they do a lot of great work. And I'm hoping to work with them uh, to bring in some legislators to do a town hall at our California employment law conferences that are coming up in October and, and November. So they're doing some great work. Again, they have their own advisory council. Um, that's a volunteer board. So they're always, they're actually looking for someone to do their social media. So you don't even have to be, they do a lot of virtual stuff. So if you're interested in volunteering and also interested in advocacy, this is a great group. Let me know. I'll connect you. Um, let's see. Let's keep going. All right. Benefits. Uh, this is a quick overview. Here's the top six benefits that I tell everybody about. Um, this is where you want to come for your HR education and, and training. Keep it up. You, uh, there's a lot going on. I know it can get overwhelming in the office. As an OD a consultant, I know that HR is a lonely job sometimes. And sometimes it's, um, what's the right saying? Uh, it, it's not valued in the way that it should be because you have to deal with a lot of sensitive issues. Sometimes it gets sticky and yucky. And so this is where you want to come to keep your HR education up. And most importantly, those relationships within the HR community, because sometimes you can't ask someone in your office. You, you want that outside person that you can count on. And I know plenty of people who um, have Pyra members as friends on their um, speed dial in case something erupts at the office like a you know a difficult employee or a lawsuit you want that person who's been there done that to tell you what worked for them what didn't work and what to stay away from so um that's huge here we have california focused hr that is our um sweet spot so if you are phr california um then uh that that's this is where you want to come, particularly the California Employment Law uh, update that's happening in October. And I have a slide on that. Gnome, um, the scholarships are for accredited universities only, not online 
uh, learning modules that you do. Thank you for the question though. Hopefully that answers it. So Noam asks, do the scholarships apply to learning outside of academia like Coursera or uh, LinkedIn Learning, things like that? And they don't, it's just accredited colleges. All right, the HR certification uh, scholarship actually is when you pass your exam, they will reimburse you for some of that. I know you didn't ask that, but um, yeah. Um, we also have some online tools, which I'm gonna get into in a moment and the free webinars I've been talking about. So let's talk about this online compliance center um, that may make a really big difference for you. Here it is. Um, and I'll go back to become a member in a second. But uh, we have a partnership with Mineral. You might remember them as Think HR. You get this free with your membership. And just the compliance center would cost you probably $500 if you were to purchase it alone. It also comes with this Pyra Live. Um, it's a ask an HR advisor. It's kind of like an HR hotline. It's a phone number you call. There's uh, senior certified professionals there to answer it. They're not attorneys. So they're just going to basically guide you. It's a great to get a, a second opinion from these folks. Um, you can call them or go online to ask them the question. If you were to purchase that on your own, that would be around $1,200. Uh, and you get to call them an unlimited amount of time. Uh, they have been a little sticky. If you're a consultant working for multiple organizations, they don't like that. So you may want to just keep your questions related to your one organization. Most of our members work for an organization and not uh, and not necessarily consulting for multiples. So just be careful with that. I see something in the chat, so. All right, and um, the great thing that we added a couple years ago is what we call Hira Learn. And that is an enterprise-wide learning management system where it has right now over 200 courses and you could train your employees on it. You can create course tracks for them. It'll print out certificates for them. If you were to purchase that alone would be in the thousands of dollars. Um, you could even upload your own courses to it. Um, it does not include the mandatory uh, sexual harassment training for, for managers or there's a mandatory OSHA training, but you can add that in for an additional cost. So this is these are some compliance tools uh, that are fantastic. The thing is, is that logging in can be temperamental. You'll want to visit this site, pyro.org slash workplace to log in. It's a, a SSO single sign-on technology because it is an outside platform. If you have any trouble, just email me and Ellie Set or, or both of us would be good or call us and we'll get you on. We're, we we do have back end so we can help get you on. If you're not a member, you know, become a member. Um, here's a code, Pyra15 for $15 off the $175 membership fee. Uh, we'd love to have you. You know what? If you don't you can't really commit to that right now, go to a couple meetings and see what you, uh, what you think. And if you decide, you know what, I really want to get more involved, I want to make this investment in my career, in my HR uh, professional development, then go for it. We'd love to have you. Uh, if you are part of a larger HR team, we have a corporate type membership. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can scan this code, you'll get the slide later, or just ask me if you have any questions. Um, volunteering. So I've talked about volunteering. If you have any specific questions, let me know. Um, and I talked about the uh, Pyra board association-wide, the chapter uh, boards. We have committee boards uh, on the various specialty groups that we have. Once a year at the California HR Conference, which is in May, and uh, next May, we're having it on May 4th through the 6th. So we're having some really fun events around May the 4th be with you and things like that. So you should go. But um, that's where we need around 100 volunteers. And Ivan said he volunteered. It's a great way, one, to meet a lot of people in HR, two, to get to know us and our board members a little bit more. It you uh, It is work. So one day you'll work. It's a three-day conference. So 
the first day is usually kind of half day. Um, so what will happen is you'll get selected to work one day and then you'll get the rest of the conference. You'll be able to attend for free and um, not free, but in exchange for your volunteer work. And it is a day of work, so you can't be multitasking there and working uh keeping in touch with your office, you will need to get those three days as if you were getting your professional development in. Um, but it's a great way to get uh, your certification credits all at once, your uh, volunteer uh, experience going just to see, hey, is this something I want to dedicate more time to? But um, I call volunteering networking on steroids because this is where people are going to get to know you. I, the more traditional networking socializing is going to an event in the evening, shaking hands, passing out the, the business cards. That could only get you so far. And if you're great at following up with people and setting up appointments, that works. However, volunteering, that's where people are going to see who you are, uh, what your work ethic is, how you manage your time, um, uh, you know, your interpersonal skills. And so if you are looking for a great opportunity or a new opportunity or to really build your your consulting business, for example, I highly recommend volunteering. So uh, Ivan, I don't know if you want to add someone some more here. I know you were talking about this is a place where it's helped you to build your leadership skills, but feel free to chime in if you like. Any questions about volunteering? No, not on my end, except yeah, it's a it's a very good way of getting to to also know more people. Um just those conversations that you have, um, they go a long way. Great. Sherry, do you want to unmute and ask a quick question? Yes. Um, I am on the website, that link that you put for the period.org uh, volunteer, but I don't see on the website where you can volunteer for the conference. Is that something that will be added towards as we get closer? Yeah, so what you'll want to do is make sure there's a volunteer entrance form in there. Fill that out. Our conference is until May, so we open up the volunteer application process in uh, like February, March. Okay. Uh, time frame. So if you fill out the uh, volunteer uh, um, survey and say, hey, I'm really interested in volunteering at the conference, then you'll get an email for that. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, sure. All right. I got eight minutes left. And this is the best part of the webinar. Uh, learning and networking at Pyra. I talked about the HR education. We have virtual chapter meetings, conferences, including the HR uh, California HR Conference, California Employment Law Conference. We also have specialty programs. Right now, um, I used to do the Pyra Real, hashtag Real HR. We have a Pyra HR series coming up. So again, check the calendar often. It's always being updated. Um, I already mentioned that members get a better rate uh, for all of our events. Um, get certified. We have a couple certification uh, prep courses. So we do not, we are not the certification agents. We are, we provide prep courses. The two agents that uh, provide the major HR certifications in the United States is HRCI and SHRM. SHRM certification came out in 2015. Um, they're all great. I got the SHRM. I love the SHRM learning system. I, uh, the, the test was difficult. For me, I am not a great test taker. I took two prep courses um, and studied for nine months, and I put in probably over 175 hours testing for that. I'm um, sorry, uh, studying for this. So, um, yeah. Uh, it's it's some work. Highly suggested. I boosted up my salary, you know, several thousand dollars passing the SHRM uh, senior certification. There are uh, stats out there that if you do get your SPHR, which is the HRCI senior HR certification or the SHRM SEP, which is the SHRM equivalent to the SPHR, you can increase your salary by $20,000. So a lot of work. You might be one of those great test takers. If you are, 
go for it. I like the prep courses because they're pretty intense, but I get the materials and I meet people who are taking the course at the, in the same window. So what I did is I met people there and set up my own study groups and my own accountability um, partners. And we would study one evening a, a, a week and on Saturdays, and we'd just go through all the readings, all the uh, questions, everything. <sighs> so I hope that answered any certification questions. And Chelsea, uh, thank you for asking. Do, does Pyra also have a mentor program? So. We are launching a mentor program, Pyra Los Angeles, actually. And uh, Elisa, if you could put that in the, if you could find the link, uh, Pyra Los Angeles is doing two mentor, uh, like micro mentor programs a year right now. They just launched their fall mentor program. Um, uh, if Elisa doesn't find it right now to put, put it in the chat, we'll make sure to uh, add the information about the mentor program in the email that we sent out. It, it's a small program. Uh, people get uh, early entrance into HR or HR students get paired up with a senior or more senior HR person. And they have around six to eight weeks of, 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 of program. So that is just launching. We're hoping to roll it out to uh, all, all the chapters are able to do it. So thank you for that question. Here's a great um, webinar coming up uh, next week. It's with a new partner of ours, Rain. And I was really interested in this uh, new benefit. It's uh, earned wage access. And basically, uh, Rain allows employers to provide uh, their employees with loans that go against their salary. Now, I'm not a big fan of uh, like the payday loans and all that, but I know with inflation right now, some people uh, on your workforce may need just a little help to get them through to the next paycheck. So this is actually a very interesting um, opportunity to learn about. And uh, the California employment law update is coming up. And it uh, will be in L.A. at the Los Angeles Marriott by the Burbank Hilton on October 24th. And then in Orange County at the Irvine Marriott on November 6th, uh, we have. We're going to be on the cutting edge of what the governor signs in at the end of September as law. Uh, we have a lot of folks who just come to us every year for this California Employment Law update. If you have any questions about this, let me know. I think the pricing right now, uh, let's see, what, do I have this pricing? Uh, until August 31st to attend the full day in person, it's $249 for members, uh, $399 for members who want to renew, and the non-member price is up a little from that at $419. We also have a virtual version, which is cost-effective. I don't, I don't do great on virtual uh, because I get very distracted with my other things, so um, I highly attend, I highly recommend that you attend. This, if you could show mastery in employment law and and uh, in California, uh, I that's a really good thing. That's uh, I got the Sherm C SCP. I would definitely go for the PHR California next because um, you know we're in California. It's a employee state, and we need to be in compliance and make sure to mitigate uh, getting into any costly lawsuits. Here's the save the date. So uh, I think someone, I forgot, I'm sorry, I forgot, Sherry, I think you were asking about volunteering for the conference. This is when the conference is going to happen, May 4th through the 6th at the uh, Hilton Anaheim. The volunteer application process will begin. And if you don't see anything by March, just email me um, and I'll be sure to send you the application. It is a competitive application process, so we can't guarantee that you'll get a spot, but we need up to last year, I needed 80 volunteers. And usually we get around 100, 125 applications. So we also need virtual volunteers as well because we provide a hybrid uh, uh, package to the conference. And uh, with one minute left, Commit to going to at least one uh, professional development or networking event 
a quarter. Now, I didn't say a Pyra event, although I would like you to go to a Pyra event. Don't stay isolated. Make sure you make your that goal for yourself of keeping up with your professional development, keeping up with your socializing within a professional uh, environment, because you're going to want those relationships. You're going to want those connections. Don't wait until you're facing a layoff or you're just miserable at work or you need mastery in a certain area um, to continue to move ahead. Please, please don't. So make that goal. But here's some things that are coming up. Uh, today, North OC is having a mixer. I don't know if I can go. I wanted to go. I actually signed up for it. It's actually sold out right now, and it was free. Um, tomorrow, we have a Lunch and Learn that's free about Minerals Smart Employee Handbook Builder, which is a great tool if you need to refresh your handbook at the office. Um, on August 22nd, I was telling you, we have a three things going on. Inland Valley, so they meet out of uh, the Pomona, Rancho Cucamonga area. They have a meeting on uh, you know, managing a smooth exit for employees. LA, uh, Pirate LA and Pirate West Out Los Angeles are having that wine tasting. I have another commitment, but I usually love going to the wine tastings. And I think you need a glass of wine when you're talking about Paga, for sure. Um, Pirate South of Sea is having a social on the 29th at Del Frisco's in Irvine. So check that out. Uh, Valerie, if you're around on the 20th, South Bay is having a social too in Manhattan Beach. Um, but yeah, we have lots going on. A lot, a lot of going on. And uh, it's my pleasure to serve you. We'll get these slides out to you. Stay connected with the community. We have a great LinkedIn page. Follow that. Uh, we're doing a lot of interaction on Instagram, a little bit on X, and uh, it's not, it's formally Twitter. I think you could still get on there that way. Uh, Facebook, we have some. Our forum is not as active as we would like, but the LinkedIn is and attend the meetings. That's where you're gonna really get a lot of richness in terms of interacting with other HR professionals. Don't hesitate to contact me if something comes up. I'm at your service. I uh, wanna make sure you're successful. So thank you so much. I appreciate you joining. We are officially adjourned and uh, I'll stay on a little bit more if anyone has some final questions, but I'll stop the recording now and Thank you.